Charles County, my name is Amanda Stewart. I'm on, I have the honor of serving as your Charles County Commissioner for District 3. Well, today you'll see that I'm in Waldorf Marketplace right outside of World Class Barber. And here today on June 25th, we had a vaccination clinic in connection with the National Guard, Go Army, and the Charles County Department of Health. Dr. Abney has pulled all these folks together to give out free vaccinations because she understands and she recognizes the need to help protect the county residents and beyond. I asked Dr. Abney this morning, you know, Dr. Abney, how are we doing on the numbers? And she said, folks 65 years or older, they're doing really great. Their vaccination rates with completely vaccinated is at 81%. But Overall, for all Charles County residents age 18 and over, we're only at 54%. As you can see, we're here today waiting for folks to come out to get vaccinated. It is so important to protect yourself, protect your loved ones and your friends and your family that you want to make sure that are here for the long run. So we're out here. This is a pop-up clinic and we're working with a barber here in Waldorf to bring shots to arms in the community, meeting people where they are. And this is a trusted place where people come, get their hair cut, talk to a barber, and then they realize that they can talk to somebody about getting vaccine and that today actually get vaccinated. So we're having a lot of success with the pop-up concept and we've moved away from the mass vax. As the mass vax draw down, these pop-up clinics are more important to get into the communities. And we're being very intentional about where we're going and we're looking at the data and we're looking at the zip code. And then we're determining where we have trusted partners and we can partner with a, a community such as this in Waldorf, Waldorf in Charles County with the health department and then come and bring shots. This will be an intentional pivot away from mass vax and away from the uh, mini vax sites where you see a stationary site to somewhere we can go set up very quickly, but also bring trust and use the community resources we have and trusted voices to help us get people out to get the vaccine. As you can see that the National Guard is here, we're, one, we're the only state that has a vaccine equity task force led by a, a National Guard Army General. And what we can bring to bear are really the professionals in the medical field, in the logistics field. And we've been very successful in running the Vaccine Equity Task Force and the larger, helping in the larger effort with MDH and putting shots in arms and also testing PPE distribution. During COVID-1, we were doing food distribution and we we're doing PPE distribution. We were also working with the health department. So it was a natural transition when it came to vaccine to have us come and work very closely with the local community and with the, with the um, health departments to get the vaccine out. Today we're doing a GoVax uh, campaign drive to try to get people to take the vaccine uh, to help out with the numbers because I feel, you know, a lot of people is on the fence about it. So I'm here today to try to convince people to cross over and let's make it happen. You know, everybody has their own perception about it, and we all be on the fence like myself, but then I made a decision that, you know, to be around a lot of people, it's best that I try to protect my health, so I took the chance to go ahead and get vaccinated, and I didn't have any effects, which I think that's what a lot of people are afraid of is the aftermath, but I was willing to just go ahead and make it happen for myself, and so far I've been feeling great. Uh, I don't know any changes in my body thus far. And uh, I just think it's the best thing for, for everybody to do. So Mr. Taylor, give me an idea about why you're concerned about getting the COVID vaccine. Uh, the, I guess the, the rush that it, it had with, the, with everything going on, it kind of just seemed like everything was rushed and just through you know, past experiences, listening to you know, different stories of upbringings of you know things that have happened like we talked about a little bit earlier um with the tuskegee incident and stuff like that and just hesitation so. okay so let me let me break those down and talk to you about them so the first one let's talk about the rush it did look like it was rushed and it had a tragic label at first operation warp speed however the reason it seemed rushed is because first off the technology had been worked on for decades. 
uh, even back from when there was SARS and before. But the thing that made it go really fast is because the research didn't have to wait for funding. Because this was a pandemic and people were dying all over the world, researchers were being able to get money quicker. So governments all over the world and foundations all over the world just opened up their purses and said, here, we're not going to have you wait two, three years to get funding. So that's what facilitated. And people who worked as competitors before were working together. So that's how it seemed rushed, but it really wasn't rushed, okay? And then you mentioned Tuskegee. And that was a tragic part in our history as far as research. Uh, and it was something that we all need to know about. But there are now very many checks and balances on researchers. Even if you're not doing direct research where you're testing a drug on people, if you're just doing even observational research on humans, you have to have some training and you have to have a certificate to show that you know how to do correct research and ethical research when you're working on humans. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that'll help some of the other people in the audience feel a little more comfortable about getting the COVID-19 vaccine. Because the most important thing is that we help young people and the rest of our population get vaccinated so that we can decrease the spread of COVID in our county. Come out, find a vaccination clinic, go to Charles County's Department of Health website. They're listed on there. You can make an appointment. There's clinics happening all week long across the county. Do your part. Please get vaccinated. Hi, I'm J.W. King with the Charles County Volunteer Fire and EMS Association. As summer is here and grilling season is upon us, we want to go over a few grilling tips so you have a safe grilling season and barbecues and cookouts and everything. First, what you want to do is make sure your grill is a good three to four feet away from any structure, house, fences, eaves, soffits. The hotter the grill gets, it will burn into your house. Also, you want to make sure all your propane connections are tight because if it's leaking gas while you're cooking, the grill could explode. Always want to keep kids and animals minimum of three feet away from you while you're cooking so there's no hazards in tripping. Thank you. My name is Ashley Chanel. I'm the Chief of Tourism for the Department of Recreation, Parks and Tourism with the Charles County Government. Father's Day weekend, Charles County government hosted in partnership with Smallwood State Park, a Major League Fishing tournament. Well, this partnership with Major League Fishing has been a 15 year long relationship building. It's been an excellent partnership. The anglers love to come here and fish. We're known for our large mouth bass fishing here, uh, world renowned in this area. And so it's a great experience for the anglers. They come, they bring their families, they spend money in the county, which is a great benefit to tourism. So we're excited to welcome them to the county once again. With this tournament, we have about 160 anglers and seven, additionally, 70 marshals. So they're all here with their families having a great time and fishing here in Smallwood State Park. My name is Cody Pike and I'm just, I'm just from on the other side of the river, just west of Richmond, Virginia. I've been fishing my whole life. I've been fishing tournaments for probably 15 years, started fishing some youth stuff and just stepped up from there. What I love about the experience here in Charles County is the fishing. I mean, the Potomac River offers some of the best fishing we have around here. Um, there's other fisheries, but the Potomac has always been a staple for this area. So I, I just love coming up here and fishing this place. The Potomac is, is different than anything else we really have. I mean, it's tidal. So once you understand tidal fisheries, it makes it really fun to come out here and, and know your windows of when you're going to have fun. So you could, there's somewhere you could come for a half day trip and you don't have to wake up at four in the morning. You could come catch a plenty of bass in the right tide and go home. My name is Daniel Fennell and I am the Senior Director of Tournament Operations at Major League Fishing and the Tournament Director here at the Tackle Warehouse Pro Cert. Here at Charles County, we have a long-standing relationship. Uh, this is not our first event here by any means. We have a lot of our uh, BFL events, which are one-day events right here in this area. We've had hosted championship events and with our BFL All-American here on the Potomac River. Um, and we've also been here with our pro circuit multiple times. So it's a long-standing relationship that we have. 
here with Charles County. And the reason you come here is because Potomac River is a great fishery and we really enjoy uh, being able to give that experience to all of our anglers. A lot of our anglers have been here many times in the past through our different circuits. We've also got a lot of rookies who are seeing this water for the first time, but I have no doubt that they'll fall in love with it. And another great thing about Charles County is, is you're so close to so many exciting things for families of these anglers. So this is an excellent opportunity for these anglers who have usually been away from their families for months at a time in some cases to be able to include them while they're out there fishing each day of the event. Their families can go and sightsee and do all the great things. They can shop in your malls. They do all these great things that, uh, that this area in Charles County is able to provide. Typically at our pro circuit level, you'll see an increase in your economics of, you know, upwards of $2 million just from us coming in. And that comes from anglers' fuel expenses, anglers' housing while they're here, their food that they take in, and any extra, you know, activities that they may seek while they're in these areas. Here at Charles County, we've had numerous events. And so this is a place that I'm very familiar with just because of the amount of tournaments that we've actually had here. It is an amazing group to work with, no doubt about it. Our host here uh, with Charles County, amazing people. The people at Smallwood State Park, I've known, I think the last three park rangers at this park. And so it's, these are all very long-standing relationships. And so when you can go to an event like this, where you do have those background relationships already built. It just makes it that much easier for us to be able to operate and to put on the best event that we can in these areas. We're just really excited to be here at Charles County and on the Potomac River for our stop number five of our Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. We're really boiling down to the end of our season, so the anticipation for anglers, you know, trying to qualify for our championship, there's a lot riding on these last two events, and there's no better place than right here at the Potomac to get it done.